That's Can I just say I loved you and Patty Pam Pam. It sounds like a musical. Patty Pam. Yeah. It does. It's like mu- Music Man, Patty pa- Patty Pam Pam. I was uh, in Patty Pam Bang Pam. Bang. Yes. Patty, that's the sequel to Chee Chee <laughs> Bang Bang is Patty Pam Pam. Patty Pam Pam. <laughs> Off Broadway. <laughs> Can I just say, without being like really homosexual here, <laughs> I love doing these with you. Oh. I listened to all these again, you know, just to make sure everything sounds clean before I post it. And I was just, I, I love listening to your commentary and you have all these really deep, lovely, insightful things oh. to say and all this wonderful commentary. And then I'm like, wow, that's crazy. <laughs> that's <laughs> Kudos it. for spilling. Kudos for spilling. No, I'm I, saying like nothing. I feel like it's a good key key. No, I feel like you do all the research, mama. I do so much. I feel like you're the foundation. <laughs> but you have so much good insight. I'm anyway. just the blush. You're like literally the rest of the makeup and I'm just blush. <laughs> And the highlight. Highlight and blush. Highlight blush and from blush. from, like, lip to, like, eyebrow. Right, right, right. <laughs> <laughs> so we're talking about Drag Race Holland Ooh, today. Drag Ooh. Race Holland. It got canceled. <laughs> Isn't this the only... No. I think... I think Sweden is either canceled or on pause. But I think this was the first... It was the first, the first franchise to get canceled. Correct. After only two seasons. Yes. Two very short seasons. So That's the word you were doing. Well, I, I cycled through my brain of all the different words I wanted to use in regard to this season. And short was the one that came to my mind. <laughs> Do you have a buzzword that comes to your mind with this season? Um, <laughs> Madam Mustache. <laughs> I don't know if you watched IMHO for this season. Did you watch this season live? Yeah. IMHO was doing reviews for this season. Because IMHO right. does reviews for, like, everything. Everything. And so they were the... I mean, I freaking love them. And mm-hmm. this was they were the only people that were talking about Drag Race Holland. Yeah. At least, like, before I found, like, you know, chat f- threads and shit, whatever. And they called they called Madame Madness Madame Mustache. That's incredible. And that's all I can think about <laughs> is Darby just always calling her Madame Mustache. And I feel like it's a little disrespectful. <laughs> also, not it's not a buzzword. Mm. But when I think of Drag Race Holland, I think of Cedarjean smiling and waving at the camera. Yes. After getting in the fight with Abby. I love Cedarjean. Yes. Can I just say I Ver- love Cedarjean? <laughs> yes. The the thing with this season. Is that I remember it playing out so differently than how it originally did. And I think that's how I felt about Canada, too. And I think that's mm. the power of the pandemic, baby. The <laughs> pandemic, I think, changed so much the way that I looked at all those seasons. Yeah. Like, my first impression of UK1 was that certain queens were slaying really hard, specifically the Viv, which she was mm. doing good. But I... Watching it again, I'm like, oh, Cheryl, like, really ate and did not get her, her chickens at all. Her, not her, chi- her chisons. May her, I, may, her chicken dinner. May I say, I think also, it's watching it now with all of the drag race we have. Right. I feel like it informs how you look at the show a little bit, you know? Absolutely. Because there's so much more reference and things alike, things not alike. And we've seen so many of these formulas played out so many right. times. That after a while, you start to see or anticipate, like, oh, this should be the result. So it's interesting to see, like, in other seasons, Mm -hmm. especially in their first season when they're really still cooking, how sometimes it feels so unlike Drag Race. Mm. Um, I saw interesting commentary because they were talking about... I, I went at least <laughs> one. I think I think I went at least one episode without talking about Housewives. <laughs> but Real Housewives of Germany is starting. Mm. And so I was saying, like, it's not going to be good because Germany has a really different perception of reality TV than Americans. Mm. America really has the niche on reality TV. Right. But, Drama check. But, you know, the further you stray, the more you're getting a different perception. Like, we talked about this with Thailand. Because mm-hmm. Thailand was so different. And yeah, it was more seemed, like old school Project Runway. Yeah, and it didn't seem so allegiant to how Drag Race now is super game show reality competition vibe. Right. 
Um, so you see a little bit of that in other international seasons because I think it's also like, however, that country's culture is regarding reality TV, competition, television, if they have it. Um, so it, it, it kind of trickles through in Drag Race a little bit as right, well. Right, right. So then there's those nuances in like how challenges are done, how how wins are given out, how judging is conducted. Yes, what like yeah, that. what they're looking for, etc. Right. Um, I just do we all talk about it now? Like, who are your favorites from this season? I mean, initially, my very first and probably who has remained a top has been Setter Jean. Setter Jean. She's Setter like Jean is she's everything. like a Jimbo or like. She's just like that that standout, like clearly different so from the different. group. Yeah, and like but she's so like fun and charismatic and cute and like she's right. definitely like your instant connection. In and the, group. the way that she's tackling the runways is with so much forethought and camp and glamour. She's really thinking on a scale that I think drag race has become attuned to. Yes. Especially by this point in the kind of zeitgeist of what Drag Race is. I think Setter Jean was really tapped into that. Yeah. And I think that Fred did not really appreciate that. Mm. So I love Setter Jean, and I'm a big Jane and Jake stan. Yeah. I love Miss Jane and Jake. Yes. And obviously Envy. I knew of Envy before even going into the season. So I thought, oh, she's probably going to win. Because I've seen her Instagram, and she's beautiful. 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 Um, yeah, Janie's so fun because, like, I enjoyed her the first time, mm. and then UK versus the world happened, and watching her after versus the world again, <laughs> you appreciate, I, yeah, oh my gosh, <laughs> that Venga bus <laughs> lip sync, Jesus, but, like, she's so cunty and fun, yeah. and, like, she is a bitch in this season, oh, but bitch. it's so marvelous, and I love it, um, she reminds me of a girl from Sweden who I can't wait to talk about, but, hell yeah. Um, I just, I love her energy on this season because she's also giving like reality TV Absolutely, because she's a great talking head. She has so much personality. She is really fearless in interacting with the judges too. She's very like hey. irreverent and just like confident. Mm -hmm. And I love that about her. Um, ever, so everyone you mentioned, but also Chelsea boy. Chelsea's great. Chelsea is another like kind of instant connect for me, at least aesthetically. Mm -hmm. You know, she's a little bit quieter, but I mean, she's, she's that girl from the season where like great looks and maybe not like the most like forward personality, but like she, she actually kind of reminds me in that sense of maybe someone like Crystal from UK. Oh, I can totally see like, that. They're a little more muted, but you totally understand their vibe and their POV. And Chelsea had a really cool POV and a really, like, fleshed out. Her and Setter Jean, I mean, obviously Envy. Yeah. And and Janie, the four we said, I feel like they all were so fleshed out and so, like, ready. They, they knew exactly who they were, what they wanted to be on Drag Race. Yeah, they yeah, really had that package together. Can I say, I really love room service. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, room's an icon. Room's an icon, and we had talked about this last week right after we had finished recording is that at this time if you were involved in any of the like drag race memory which was like lee dawson and there was something called rapple dark res which was the the gooby please dolan face redrawn as rupaul and it was like a clip art uh ms paint type situation where I think they did season seven and season eight and maybe season nine. And it was the stupidest just recreation of challenges, recreation of drama things with a bunch of the random queens showing up. And on one of my alt Twitters, I still follow an account called Tampon Du Jour, <laughs> which was a parody account of Tempest Du Jour. And it, I promise, for any of you who are listening right now, I promise this will all start making sense. There was um, Stinky Lame Meat Juice, <laughs> which was Stacey Lane Matthews. And the person who had made all these started doing drag, like, right before the pandemic, posted videos that they were going by the name Room Service. And they were really excited to start doing drag and to really start figuring out their aesthetic. And then all of the Rapple Dark Res videos went blank all of the burner accounts were gone except like tampon du jour and like i think the one that was impersonating katya i don't remember what that name was o only tampon du jour survived the purge 
which I understand because I followed all those burner accounts and <laughs> the then, Tina burner accounts, all the Tina burner accounts. <laughs> and then room came walking into that work room and I'm like, that's why she deleted them. Oh my God. I love room service. <laughs> I'm looking Don't at, show me that photo. I'm looking at pictures of the season <laughs> and it's rooms. So, okay, so for the first episode, this is cute. They do the season five photo shoot. Yeah, let's talk about the first episode. <laughs> kind of, uh, we, we could talk about that a little more oh, yeah. in detail. So The frog legs. The frog legs. First off, there's like an, an intro that talks about all the old seasons, but they focus on five and eight the most. Like They add... Stock footage in excess. Of, of only of, those seasons. Of, yeah. <laughs> of just that. And when we get into the first mini challenge, it's that uh, water tank photo shoot yeah. from season five. And so, I don't know about you, but I think at this point I thought, is the whole season just going to be legacy challenges from five and eight? Right. Okay. Well, and also, like, I love the idea of, like, it's an international season, like, we're trying to, like, figure out what works. Let's all just do successful challenges from previous seasons from the OG. But why the water tank one? Okay, and also, like, no disrespect to these women, but I feel like it really made me appreciate how hard the season five girls served. Because, like... Well, this set also sucks. <laughs> true. It's a lower budget, like, lower quality tank. There's giant black bars um, down the middle. Yeah. It's like they're in a prison cell I know. in the ocean. It, like, it's, it ruins the photo because it's not like a giant, like, aquarium tank where you have, like, right. the full shot. But, I mean... They're prison merfolk. The, the, the divas, the dolls, who are the dolls, like, did do the best. Like, I would have just fully mugshotted. I would have seen those black bars and I would have just sat down there and I would have blank-faced... Stared at that camera and been like, fuck you, yeah, Fred. Right? Uh, okay, but art, wait, yeah, history, art? wait, art, what is it? What, you, what is it? Mind of a Master. Mind of a Master. I'm literally, I'm having a stroke. Art <laughs> repeats life. What is that word? What oh. Is that <laughs> what is that? Life finds a way. Not that. Are you a pro life or what is happening? From <laughs> Jurassic Park. Oh. <laughs> Um, gonna have an aneurysm. Life for life, life imitates, imitates art. art. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, anyways, <laughs> God. I'm anyway, exhausted. back to what I was saying. Um, uh, in a miraculous way, Room recreates Serena Cha Cha's <laughs> photo because Room. So, circling back to her, that's why I brought it up. Her photo is literally like her socked feet, <laughs> wet, feet. wet socked feet, <laughs> like. Press up against the glass, like, legs out. Like, it looks like Serena Cha-Cha's when it's just, like, her frog legs, but worse, because she has socks on. Um, but iconic. We love Room. I'm going to scream. Yeah. I honestly hate the things where they get their drag messed up, because I don't know how many tights some of these girls wear. When I was doing drag, I wore 16 pairs of tights. Yeah. And I wore all of them. And I probably wouldn't go to Drag Race thinking I needed more. Like, I might bring spares just in case. But if all 16 pairs of my tights got soaked at the exact same time with water that other queens had been swimming in... And your pads. And my pads, I would have honestly probably thrown it all out. Yeah, I would have been like, sucks. all these girls have been swimming and spinning in this. There is no way I'm going to keep these, even if they dry out. I'm going to have these girls' nastiness all over me. Yeah, no, I, thank you. I hate that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, oh, do you know who I love? Another girl who I love? Hmm. Mama Queen. Interesting. Okay, hear me out. I'm listening. Let me cook. She, I don't think, because she's awesome, but I don't think she's a drag race girl. No. Because you know how there are certain queens where it's like, they're a really good queen, but they're not consistent or, like, built for the drag race formula. Right. I don't think Mama Queen is a drag race queen. I think she is too like spiritual and conceptual mm. and like I you know outside of everything. Yeah. Because right. she's a little weirdo. A little woo -woo 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 -woo. weird. But I uh, don't don't you invoke the name of Shaka Khan on me. What are you doing? This is a legacy um, season of legacy. Yeah, that's the legacy. Um <laughs> but like I just think she's cool, and I appreciate her, like, very chill vibe. Mm -hmm. And she... I feel like she's kind of like a wild card, because a lot of her looks are quite messy. Right. But then every once in a while, she turns out, like, a really crazy, like, really impressive look. Right. Like, that Mary Jane look that she did was, like... It was very fantastic. interesting. 
What do we think about Fred as a as a host? Because oh. I think Fred is pretty cool. I think Fred <laughs> seems like someone. I think he's neat. I think he's neat. Fred seems like someone who genuinely cares and really just wants the girls to have a good time while filming this TV show. Um, but I think that niceness almost goes into mm, lacking awareness mm. for the competition. Um, there was a competition I was in years ago where the host just loved everybody. And so she wouldn't eliminate anyone. Mm. And it would just be like week three, no one would go home. Week four, no one would go home. Week five, she'd eliminate three people because the competition needed people to go home. Uh, and uh, then yeah. it would be like, okay, I'm never going to do this again. Then week six happens and she sends nobody home. Ugh. And then week seven, she double eliminates again. But it was it's... like, you were trying to be so nice that you screwed over all these people along the way. Yeah. Because one bad week could be the one that sends you home in the double a limb. And so I feel like Fred sometimes isn't paying attention to all of the competitive pieces. Where I, I feel like the, um, the way that Rue has sort of trained our brains to look at drag race judging, even though I think she's not always perfect, I think that she is very competition focused when it comes to judgment. You know? Yeah. Well, uh, I I have mixed thoughts on Fred because when I was introduced to them through the show, I really liked them. Mm -hmm. um, I think they're a game show host or something oh. in, in Holland. I might be wrong. That, I think but, you're right. But that that makes sense. Like, you can kind of pick up that vibe. They're very charismatic. They're very, like, you know. Mm -hmm. I, I feel like they're... They're really good at hosting, and right. they have really good presence in and out of drag. Mm -hmm. Like, they're even out of drag, like, when they're around the workroom. They they seem very comfortable hosting right. and taking control. So, I, I enjoy that part of them. I know that <coughs> choices they made and actions of theirs in specifically season two, so we'll talk about it when we get to Holland mm -hmm. season two, did contribute to the failure and eventual cancellation right. of the season. So that taints my view of Fred, knowing that like their favoritism and stuff that we'll get to later does mess shit up. But I think they're a really good presenter. Right. Um, and yeah, they do seem very caring, but they mm -hmm. also are, are really good at being like, okay, I'm a bitch now. And like, fuck you. Like she right. has that really good, like pseudo bitchy uh, kind of host gig. Mm hmm. What do you think about Fred's Michelle Nikki Plessia? Otherwise known to me as Holland's uh, Elizabeth Shue. Elizabeth? <gasps> Wait, I need to you look at You cannot convince face. me that these are not the same women. I have their photos here, Jesse. Elizabeth I Shue, them. is that you? It is Elizabeth Shue. Look at her right here. That's, that's Nikki Plessia. And this is Elizabeth Shue. Oh my God! Th these are the same women. And that, and here she is with a shoe. With a shoe. <laughs> That's the same woman. Um, I like her. I mean, yeah. she's she's pretty and she's cute and she's quick. It's always so baffling with the international seasons because I'm like, so what are your qualifications? Right. What do you do? Because they try to re they replicate the formula of like woman by like like <laughs> gorgeous woman to the right and then like gay man to the left right but i'm like so what did you do to get here because like if you look at like obviously michelle's trajectory to be in that seat and then they try to have like a michelle kind of vibe and obviously like she's not really like michelle but like i feel like they try to have that balance and it's always just so interesting because it ends up being some sort of like international hack like <laughs> I don't know the my favorite is the the judge from Spain she is incredibly fierce and I'm obsessed with her mm -hmm. um and she's probably I I really like if we're gonna talk about the pseudo Michelle's mm -hmm. internationally I feel like this one's very mid I feel like she's she's never like that controversial I don't think she says right. anything out of pocket I don't think she's disrespectful. I also don't think she, like, is in the gig enough to, like, really say anything super insightful. Right. She's kind of like a... No, I don't want to Say what? Say your truth. I was going to say she's kind of like a Ross, but that's rude to say that's... that to her. 
<laughs> She's apparently shown up on Dutch TV, like Dancing with the Stars, and Sorry. Holland's best fashion designer. Okay, so fashion. I love that. Yeah. I think one of her best moments that I remember on the show, that particular photo that I just showed you, I don't remember which one it is. I have it in my notes. One of the girls, and maybe it's Sedergine, says, well, I don't know if you've ever had to walk around in heels before, um, but they're very hard. And she kicks her foot up onto the desk. <laughs> really cuntily and to show off her shoe and go, I'm wearing them right now. I feel like she's Fierce. got moments. It, she just doesn't allow it to come out. I, I feel like she... Oh, was that your neck? <laughs> uh, that was my jaw, sorry. I gasped so hard that my jaw snapped. <laughs> she, I think, is so afraid to give any constructive criticism because I think she's... By, the, by this point, it seems like she's never seen drag before. Yeah. And if she's seen it, it's only been on TV. So she's trying to, like, be respectful of the art and yeah. not say anything unkind, which I wish that Ross would do. Um, okay, a couple fun facts. Mm. She has her own clothing company and store called Nikki, in all caps. Nice. She's good friends with Fred. She's an ambassador of Dance for Life, which is a Dutch charity organization that works towards a world without AIDS. Oh, I love that. So, Ally, um, she doesn't come back for season two. What? Yeah, she's repl- she has a different girly. But, oh. okay, she's it's funny, spoiler, she's impersonated on Snatch Game in season two. I love that. And the impersonation of her is wild. I can't wait for this. So, yeah, remember her. She's going to be impersonated next season. Oh, I'll remember Nikki Plesson. I will absolutely remember her. So, our very first runway, because we don't get an actual challenge. It's just a runway with, tell us why you should win, is, um, who's your queen? And so the girls all come out, dressed as their favorite queens, yeah. and poor room service tries to come out <laughs> as the evil queen from Snow White with that cheap-ass little apple on her corset. Woof. Absolutely woof. Big ol' woof. And she becomes our pork chop queen of Holland. Yeah. So deserved. I was really looking forward to seeing Room this season. Yeah, she she could have been fun. I think she was a little undercooked, maybe. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, I don't know what is going to happen with these Holland girls now that Holland's on pause, other than, like, Janie. And I guess Envy's been asked for, for many a thing. Right. Apparently she was supposed to be on Canada versus the World with Isis, and she said no. Right. Um, I think they asked um, one other girl, too. Oh. It would have been interesting to have three winners Oh, yeah, the there. Italy winner. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, three winners would be crazy. When we get to season? Italy, it's going to be crazy because I haven't watched Italy either. <laughs> so you're going to get like fresh, fresh, fresh from me. Nice. And I'm probably going to be absolutely gagged. Um, <laughs> any, I mean, any other thoughts from like the, the beginning of the show? The I will episode? say I love Janie JK, but I don't think she deserved the very first win of the okay. season. I think that it should have gone to Chelsea Boy for the Alien Okay. Game. Yeah, and I Thank love you. Janie JK. I love Janie. I think that's why I didn't warm up to Janie as much initially because I was like, "Whoa, why did she win? Who is this girl?" Right. Um, because I agree, Chelsea's look was freaking fierce. I loved it, but I think that Janie's drag is very much something that resonates with them. Yeah, that type of drag where it's like just a little bit more elevated, Wamana. I mean, it was a good B look. Yeah, and I think that she's also kind of a flip side to Envy because I mm. think they do they don't do similar like silhouettes or looks, but I think they do a similar goal, which is like just elevated beautiful woman. Right. Like it's it's extremely feminine. It's very it's like kind of a recognizable woman woman a look, but it's so elevated that it's not pedestrian at all. Right. It's very glam. It's very it's like pop star. Yes. Almost. Yeah, they are both very pop star. Well also Abby, but I I don't know if Are we ready to talk she's about too Abby? Short to be oh my elevated. god. <laughs> Abby, oh my god, do you know what I thought about this morning when I was thinking about when you're talking about recording this? <laughs> it's Curse I've invoked this girl's name twice, but Serena Cha Cha, she slayed. Because not like in terms of her drag or anything. Sorry, Abby. Keep stay with me, girl. I know you're I know, I know you're, you're listening. there. I know you're listening. I know you're listening on, on your way to work <laughs> at the office. I, I don't know. I don't know your life, girl. Um but like young, feisty, mm. kind of riling up the other queens. Um but she makes it farther than Serena. But she has that effect where she's like, she's kind of like a little Tasmanian devil. 
But then it's also funny because, well, not funny. I don't know what word. It's interesting because she has her relationship with Envy. Right. The mermaid girls or whatever. They're, they're little family. But they fight with everyone. <laughs> Abby fights with everybody. I... Uh... It, it, it's like everybody else in the room got sidelined to all of Abby's drama because we have so many really amazing queens this season that are doing a good job. And it's like, we're not going to focus on them because Abby and Cedergine are fighting. We're not going to focus on them because Abby and um, Envy are now fighting. Oh, Abby and Mama Queen are fighting. Yeah. Yeah. They're, they're playing. For, I, we can circle back. We're, yeah. Honestly, should we talk about... The Forgotten Girl? Should we talk about some of the early outs? Yeah. How do you feel? So, um, next out is Patty Pam Pam. <laughs> Patty Pam Pam. Can okay. I say something? <laughs> say it. Real, Speak it's, your truth. It's hateful. Hit roar. You have your phone open right now. I want you to look up Animal Crossing New Horizon, Tammy. Oh, no. Oh, my God. Uh, yeah. She looks I already know. like an Animal Crossing character named Tammy. She has... The exact eye The monkey. Oh, and oh, no. oh my god, yeah. Yeah, the monkey villager. Ta- yeah. She has it's the so exact t- facial shape. And like the same mouth, that same like kind of empty headed smile. And it's shady to say, but she it's, looks like it's a little shady, but it's so T. <laughs> and it's so devastating that it is T. <laughs> but it is T. She uh, she looks like someone else too, like She's one of those people that kind of looks like a couple people. She looks like a cartoon. Like, she, she really almost doesn't does. look real. Yeah, like, when you see her, like, uh, she's, like, in an unca- uncanny valley. Not in a bad way. Yeah, but just, it's like, just she like, doesn't look real. Yeah. Um, I remember there was, like, a lot of upset when she left. Because everyone thought that Madame Madness should have left and she should have stayed. Yeah. She goes home in the very second episode where the challenge was... The season three workout thing, yeah. but a little bit different. A little bit different, as in not I love as funny. This concept, right? As in not <laughs> funny. I love this challenge. Oh yeah, idea. I love this freaking challenge. It's so um, good. Both teams went really slutty, and yes, Patty was they just did. Like there doing something. And the runway category, RuPaul narrates and says, "Category is give face," but then they all come out as works of art. So I don't know if. There was some type of mistranslation for whatever PA gave the cue cards to Rue to read off. Yeah. Or if it was changed post or what. Because, okay, do you know what it gives me when you when I look at them? What's well, that? honestly, no. Because so, uh, it is so all over the place. Because, like, oh, well, also, Nikki Tutorials is there. Nikki Tutorials is there, right? Slay. Big slay. Fierce. Because, um, like, some of them, like, if you look at, like, Janie, it's giving, like, Give me your, like, really, like, cool best makeup. Like, her, Mama Queen. It's giving, like, give me an interesting, impressive makeup look. Yeah, but then Envy's doing pop art. But then, yeah, Envy's... Is, okay, yeah, like, Envy... Madame and Gold, Spiritual Vision, Melting Ice Cream. Some of them were straight up just art. Yeah. Like, paint, like, Patty Pam Pam is just doing an art reference. Right, of Starry Night. So, like, which... all oh, cute. How do you feel about it? Because I thought I liked it more, and then when I saw... Okay, I'm getting what you're saying because I thought this slayed when I watched it (laughs) and then I looked back and I was like, "Uh, okay. Yeah. Maybe again, I've seen too much drag. We're watching all stars where they have like a million dollar budget. Yeah. So like, maybe I'm just like a little unimpressed. A little well, um, well, okay. Did you think Envy deserved the win? Cause didn't she win this week? Envy did take the win this time. Hold on, wait, I have it all. The, I literally wrote it all down. Um, I thought that Abby was really funny, too. I thought Abby was great. Um, but she... Who oh, uh, wins? <laughs> can I talk about... I'm pretty sure Envy won this. Envy does win. Because I feel like this yes. is like establishing dominance for Envy. She early does. Early in the season. I think that, honestly, Abby probably could have... She was, she did a really good job in that challenge, but then her makeup was terrible. Can I share with you someone else that I'm absolutely obsessed with? Mm. Megan Schumbrood. Yes. She was funny. I love me some Megan Schumbrood. I think she's so fun and she's very old school. Um, She reminds me of like a season three, season two kind of queen. She definitely has early season energy. Um, I'm I'm kind of obsessed with her. Yeah. That mug. 
work working so on And she's like 80% deaf, I think, in one ear and mostly deaf in the other. She had talks about that in episode one. And I think that's really like... I mean, I mean, that's not cool, but it's, like, cool to talk about that and to normalize that. People that are hard of hearing. To say, I mean, like, I... Yeah. Yeah, like, I feel like queens with disabilities and, like, I mean, chronically ill queens, disabled queens, like, anything, like, I feel like it's really, if you're willing to, really cool to talk about mm-hmm. because it does, like, share that message of, like, drag is for everyone. And, right. like, I'm sure there are a lot of people out there who want to, you know, engage in drag but feel like there are setbacks Mm -hmm. like whether it be like physical mental whatever that they're like oh i can't i right you know i wouldn't be able to do drag so i feel like anything like that like i mean like when your bread and butter is lip syncing to music and she was a great lip syncer she was so good that why tell me why lip sync i love that lip sync um I mean, she's showing that, like, that's a huge disability, and she's a fantastic queen working through it. So. Right, and she's not hindered at all. Exactly, yeah. So, I, yeah, I agree. Stuff like that is really cool to share. Obviously, it's unfortunate for her, but mm-hmm. it's amazing that she's willing to share, and it's so, like, inspirational and, and cool. Yeah. Going back to what you said, because you were talking about Patty's look, I think, ultimately, what the issue is with Holland is that it's, like, a really nice thought experiment. (laughs) Every international season sort of showcases why that country's drag is unique and different and new. We see with Canada that they're more focused on the nightclub side of things. The things you're going to see on the runway are probably things you're going to see in a bar, too, that it might just be a little more elevated. So they're really more just focused on that communal grassroots type thing in the uk they're focused a lot more on big theatrical camp not really focused on that tailored glamour that we're used to seeing those are the big pieces that were out at this time and then thailand is so focused on the cultural pieces in its drag yeah right those are the things that make those countries unique with the drag they showcase but holland doesn't give us why holland is special or like why it's drag is special in comparison it's focused so hard on replicating drag race Mm. and following the formula and following the um the challenges and the ideas of the runways that it doesn't allow the girls to show really why their drag is different than anybody else and do you know what's so interesting about Mm. that Okay, I have a ridiculously spicy take mm. about this, but I'll share that for the end. So okay. that Because I feel like I always have nothing when you ask me for a hot take. <laughs> I'm ready for one, and yes. ooh, it's going to burn this house <laughs> down, baby. Um, but do you know what's so interesting? What's is that? With the exception of France, mm. I feel like this is a problem of the European drag race mm. spinoffs, because Sweden, Germany, um, Belgium, Belgium's in Europe, right? Uh, yes. I did take take geography, even though it's an <laughs> elective now, people. At least it was when I was in high school, which it is so was crazy. Not. Was it for you? It was required. By the time I was in high school, it was an elective, mama. At least for my school, it was an elective. <laughs> and I took it because, well, I mean, obviously I didn't... I didn't retain much. anything, but... No. Um, <laughs> but, like, I do feel like it's a problem of the European seasons because at least what I've perceived because I've seen Holland, Sweden, Germany. I've not seen Belgium. And France is in a lane of its own. Mm -hmm. She slays. Mm -hmm. But I feel like of at least those ones, they all have this problem you're talking about Mm -hmm. where they feel kind of like a hollow redux of Drag Race, Mm -hmm. but they're not really putting in their own flavor because like Thailand, I think is the best at putting their flavor in. Um, France is really good in the modern era, but it's kind of like Canada where there's st- not so different, but just a little bit in their own lane. Mm-hmm. And then Sp- España is really good at putting their own flavor in. I feel like I'm forgetting an international season, but whatever. Um. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's down under. <gasps> and I feel like we, uh, the problem is Rue. Yeah. There. Yeah. But yeah, I think that's the biggest problem with Holland is that no matter what, I don't think the, why are you unique? I don't think that question ever gets answered. And 
I think that's why Holland remains kind of forgettable. Yeah. Because queens like <clears throat> Janie Envy and I almost said Sigourney. <laughs> Snooky. Snooky. Uh Jean, they're very clearly tailored in what they do. Yeah. They clearly understand who they are. And I think their drag represents who they are really well. And the Netherlands, Holland, all of that really well. But they don't ever get the space to showcase that in the same way that I think there is space made in other seasons. Even if it's not overtly like, here's why Canada's different. We at least get to see that shine through in the episodes. Yeah. But again, going back to Abby and blaming everything on her, they focus so hard on Abby's drama that nobody else gets spotlight. This is all Abby's <laughs> fault. Abby's kind of like a... She's almost like a Rebecca Glasscock, where like her storyline and her drama yeah. does take up a lot of the beef of the so season. So much. Just because she is kind of a main character, like whether you, like, want her to be or not. And that's why Shunla never got told she was pretty. It was because <laughs> Rebecca was taking up all oh, the air. This is all Abby's fault. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, so, going back, um, Patty Pam Pam is sent home to Roar by Katy Perry. There's not one singular song in Dutch in this season, I think. If I'm not mistaken, there. All English songs. And there's only, I think, one in the f- season after. And it's such a ridiculously fierce song. And it's always stuck in my head. Mm. But there's only, yeah, I think one Dutch song. It, the lip sync choices were weird. It was like, so, well, we've got these in the vault. Okay, so. again, this is a problem with freaking international seasons. Mm. Because Germany was all English songs. Most of them were RuPaul songs. Mm. But, like, I remember, yeah, it was, like, it was a lot of, like, random, like, early like not early seasons but like mid-season like polls like, it was like i need i need a hero stuff like that mm. uh for germany like, rupaul already paid for these so yeah we'll pay right? an extra couple bucks um sweet is kind of a weird more for like you got a couple swedish songs then you got like born naked and like <laughs> and, not like, born naked again. i know <laughs> okay that's the thing about these so is crying seasons. somewhere oh my god and oh my god of course <laughs> please <laughs> stop he's already dead um <laughs> the second or third season of Espanya did it or third season which was kind of sour but mm. like it's bad RuPaul songs too it'll be like <laughs> yeah like Born Naked or like in freaking Philippines they have to lip sync to I Bring the Beat how There's do you lip sync to I Bring that. the Beat you're like waiting I bring the beat bum 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 uh, yeah. I bring the beat and then wait 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 a couple of lyrics there's nothing to do to that. And then, okay, with, okay, but going back to Roar, bad choice because you already have such an iconic lip sync to this, you know? And this one wasn't like, good. Because, uh, what song did they just do? They just did Lover Girl by Tina Marie. And they didn't um, need on to. On All Stars. They didn't need to. I love that song, though. I think it's such a good lip sync song. That's a little bit more of an okay choice because it didn't have, I mean... I think Kasha freaking when she hiked up, when that, she hiked skirt up that skirt and, and she that trailed leg. across the, yes. the stage. I think Kasha ate that. I love that lip sync so much. But like, do like a little bit more of like a f- unremarkable one. You know, mm-hmm. like you could do "Bad Girls" by Donna Summer because no one's gonna remember the princess beating Lashawn <laughs> Beyond to that song except for a freak like me who remembers everything from <laughs> Drag Race. You know, right? Like there are some really good songs out there that I will survive. Yeah. That, like, could get a redux, but they choose songs that have really iconic lip syncs, which I think does it a disservice because, like, obviously the whole time I'm thinking about Kenny Davenport and Katya. Right. Like, tearing it up, and I'm thinking of Violet screaming in the back. <laughs> Come throw! Um, but instead we get Patty Pam Pam doing a cartwheel and... <laughs> in a starry night Madden dress. Madden holding her tongue <laughs> when she said, I used to bite my tongue. I remember that. <laughs> uh, can we talk about Madden Madness? Yeah, so she's... Uh... Out next. Oh wait, we oh wait, Megan Schumbrood's after Patty. Oh, that's right. right. Megan is out next. Sorry. Oh, and I was actually really sad when she left because, like, also Abby sent her home, and I think this was right after Abby had her fight with Sutter Jean. Yeah. So it's like you kind of were over Abby at this point. No offense, Abby. Sorry, girl. Sorry, sorry. Mute this part, Abby. <laughs> um, but like Abby. Oh wait, has she gotten in her fight yet? Is it, Abby's, is it that? Abby has thrown a fight over <laughs> thinking that someone took her corset. Oh, wow. Because, like, 
Oh, no, because they're going to fight after the lip sync. Abby and Janie fight during this uh, one. Oh, In the then, previous episode. And then after this, this is when they're going to fight, because Cedric thinks that when Janie comes back to the stage after she wins the lip sync, she, like, because she, like, flicks her hand yeah. over, like, move. Yeah, and yeah, Cedric yeah. thinks that's disrespectful. When Abby does so, it, yeah. So, yeah, I, this fight happens after this, not before. I was wrong. Yeah. <laughs> so Megan is out this episode, in episode three. She's out third. Um, it's a really weird acting challenge, and this is probably the only thing that maybe highlighted Holland culture, but even then it was so badly written, it didn't make sense. <sighs> why was there a pill abuser and wine and okay, the that's random the thing boy is with like, a giant bulge? I feel like, okay, for instance, on All Stars, the musical that just happened, even if you don't know Rosemary's Baby... I feel like it's pretty enjoyable content, Mm -hmm. like, surface level. It's really hard when they're doing, like, a referential skit, and, like, you have to know what it's referencing. Right. Because, like, on UK, when they did that EastEnders one, I didn't... I've never seen EastEnders. Was it EastEnders, that show? You know, when Bimini was... It's the I'm Your Mother, like... Oh, I think so. Uh That show, it's, like, a huge deal in the UK. I'm Mm -hmm. not familiar. I'm uncultured. Or, like, when Canada did those, like, mystery show things for season one. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like, as long as it's funny or like interesting without the knowledge of the source material, mm-hmm. this felt like one of the things that like someone who knew it all was like, Oh, ha, like I see, I see. Mm-hmm. Like they're really trying to like rewrite specifics of like something that I've not perceived. So right. weird challenge because we're not let in as an audience on why it's supposed to be funny. And then the runway is called Miss Holland, but it was really Miss fill in the blank, in my opinion. It was like like Miss like national pride. Like, what do you like about Holland? Is that what the prompt was? No, no, that's my, my, that's your interpretation. It's like, Miss, what do you like about Holland? Miss, tell me something about Holland. (laughs) And Madam Madness said, you know what I like about Holland? Cows. And Mama Queen said, weed. <laughs> I love marijuana. <laughs> Mama marijuana. Okay, because that's the thing. Is like, Let me just read. Runway inspiration. Chelsea boy. Whether you like it or not. Like, whether, like... Yeah. Whether. That was a and, great look, though. Yeah. Great. Envy Prue. Little Miss Sunshine. Jane J.K. Waterworks. Madam Madness. Dutch cowgirl. <laughs> Mama Queen. Mama marijuana. Like, hers has a title. What is that? <laughs> Megan Schumbrood, read my tulips. Hers is a pun. Miss Abby OMG, Miss Bouquet. <laughs> the forgotten Miss in the Canada pageant. <laughs> Setter Jean, hey girl, hey. Like some of them See? wrote it like drag race, like runway prompts, yeah. which is kind of hilarious to me. And then some of them are just like, this is what I am. <laughs> I brought this out. I hope you like my costume. Yeah, very, very fast. <laughs> I don't know what that Vivian Vanderpuss accent was. <laughs> I just did, but <laughs> yeah, there were a lot of flowers, a lot of tulips, um, florals for spring. Florals for spring. Janie's look was a flop, unfortunately. Can like, we talk about Janie spilling water all over the stage and how that very likely took an entire production crew to come out and towel that whole runway at least twice to get all that water up? It's very cringe. It's very like when Bimini tried to pop the balloons. Oh and... no, I forgot about that. And I <laughs> wanted to forget about Sorry, that. Sorry, but it's it's very that, but more um aquatic. Oh no, I just got secondhand embarrassment um, again. Yeah, but l- agreed, love Chelsea's look again. Chelsea's yeah. Chelsea's the runway killer. Absolutely. I mean like Envy and Janie are on a more just like gorge pre- polished yeah. presentation level, but if you want like fun concept Chelsea always, she's more like the got Mick or like right. the one who's always going to have the fun runway and like the cool, like the yeah. fun way, <laughs> the fun, you way. know, this look by Setter Jean is rotten. The hay look, the hay look is rotten. Oh yeah. She looks like a brick. She looks terrible. Yeah. Like if Glenn Close fell into a pile of hay and then got up. She looks like Glenn Close Glenn, to me. Glenn Farr. Glenn, <laughs> Glenn Farr. She <sighs> looks like her to me. She looks a disaster, but she was the best one in the challenge and she should have won because Mama Queen's performance was fine. So this was, I think, my final straw. Like, damn, Fred is just going to do whatever Fred wants to do. This yeah. season is not being run like a RuPaul show or like a Brooke show or an anybody show. 
this is Fred's show. Well, and honestly, yeah, because we can already see early tinges of favoritism, because, like, I'm a bit of a Mama Queen apologist, Mm -hmm. but, I mean, you can tell that they really had a soft spot for Mama Queen because of her trajectory this season, because if the judge didn't like her, she would be gone so fast. Mm -hmm. No, No disrespect. It's not her fault. It's not her fault. But, like... I think that she gets a lot of passes this whole season. We'll, we'll yeah. get to them later, but... Um, a lot of her performances are just, like, very mid. She comes across like an early out because she's not giving 100% of the challenges. She's not giving 100% to the runways. The very first week, her hat fell off. And she didn't even lip sync for that. Yeah. They were like, Room, we hate you. Yeah. Get the hell out Room, of here. you suck. Um, Megan, we hate you too. Okay, wait, talk about a curse string of challenges, because next is the dance challenge. Right. And I, I talked about this before we started recording. This dance challenge, like, I'm scarred by it. Right. Because I remember expecting... It's just so weird. Like, they choreographed, like, the, it's so weird. <laughs> they choreographed <laughs> this, like, fierce... It's Both also number. weirder, because they do the half and half Yes, there's later so in the much season. to unpack. Because this is so on this episode, here. right? The half and half is a different episode. Um, well, um, no, it's not this episode. So, so like, it's just like what? Because I also thought dance challenge. I thought they would do that. We would do them split. Okay, but anyways, they start practicing, and so then I'm thinking it's going to be almost like what we're used to the girl group challenge. Mm-hmm. But it seems like no vocals. They're just dancing. So I'm like, damn, it's going to be some intense choreography. Right. And then it cuts to this, like, (laughs) music video. That's a minute and a half. This, like, short-ass pre-recorded, like, top model dance-off. With three seconds of voguing. And the whole premise was that it was voguing. Yes, that was the other thing. Is like, they're, like, learning these disciplines. Like, yeah. it was so crazy. This it, whole challenge al- is crazy. It almost felt like they were practicing and it was going so poorly. They're like, okay, we're just going to record this really quick. Like, at the end of the day, like, okay, like, y'all get in place and just, like, freestyle. Yeah. <laughs> Thorgy freestyle. <laughs> <laughs> Did you see that clip? Yes. <laughs> oh, God. Um... But yeah, it was crazy because that dance, the whole thing was so crazy and it gave you like such blue balls, like, because no one served. There was no serving. There was no serving. Janie was fierce. I mean, yeah. But I mean, Janie. Janie's always fierce. Janie's like was fierce in spite of it, but it was like the challenge itself was like allergic to serving. Cedric Jane gets a really big storyline this episode because she fought with Abby at the beginning. They had a huge fight. Yeah. That resulted in her doing that wave that you were talking about earlier. (laughs) And then she gets hot midway through and we think that she's not going to participate in the challenge. Because she's freaking out. Well, because there's kind of... She's having that thing. You know that thing? You know that thing. Um... Where funny haha queen has to do ooh slay fierce right and you know hijinks <laughs> ensue. Um, <laughs> it was very that. It was very that. And it, you know, she was already kind of put up against the wall in terms of the storyline with her and another like main player in the season, mm-hmm. like ha- having beef. And then that person's in a challenge that there's like set up to excel in right and this is probably going to be setter jean's weaker part of her skill set mm-hmm. so like it's an interesting kind of like storyline thing but i don't care enough about this challenge to get... yeah <laughs> uh this challenge is so bad uh, but like that music video is crazy i felt like i was gaslit i thought it was going to be a lot more than what it was can i tell you what i wrote in my notes tell about me. setter jean i wrote holland jan <gasps> wow. And the more that the season went on, the more I realized that she was, because she kept getting underserved by the judges, and she definitely had the delusional thing, yeah. and definitely had a touch of salt. Um, oh. Uh, and was very theatrical. Fierce. I see that, though. This, uh, this runway was fierce, by the way, though. The diamonds runway. Right. Um. Shine bright like a diamond. Okay, well, I didn't realize that J- JD must have been freaking pissed. She flubbed two weeks in a row. Because this is the week that her skirt comes off. 
It does. Is she's walking and she has to play it off. I if my skirt came off during a challenge, I honestly would be like, "Bye, everybody. It's been good." Okay. I'm out. Well, and like last last week, your outfit leaked all over the runway, everywhere. And then also like this week, you're doing a no offense, lesser version of what Envy, who ends up winning this week, mm-hmm. is wearing. A less impressive version, and like <laughs> I love Janie, but like this is a weaker like week for her because like her style is not good. I don't like yeah. the wig on her, and then she's walking, and the skirt comes off, and then she has, she plays it off really fiercely. She pretends she like tries was, to. Well, yeah, she pretends it was intentional, but yeah, that was crazy. But Setter Jean looks so good. Setter too, Jean though. looks absolutely amazing. Her and Envy and Amber and- Vineyard even says that she was the clear winner of the challenge. But what is craziest to me is that Envy does win, and I understand why Envy won, but why would you tell someone that they were the clear winner of the challenge and then not not give them the win? And, like, include that clip, if only to, like... It's like in... Yeah. It's like in season seven when they have the two different... uh, The two different confessionals about how Katya and... Kasha Davis, like, mm. are, are like, you gonna win, basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then Pearl and Trixie win. Right. Um, but yeah, like, also, if you're gonna say that, why why keep it? Keep it in the edit. Right. And also, like, it is weird that Abby already has a second win. When, I don't know if it was necessarily, des- I don't want to say it wasn't deserved, but, but I don't like think it's it was random. Deserved. It was really random. Well, because like Envy's so fierce that like she can really excel in anything. She doesn't really do bad most mm-hmm. of the season. But it's kind of like they are just like they did it a little bit with Sasha Colby, where it's like, okay, let's give her a win this week, right? Because it's like, okay, like she deserves it. Like she's fierce, she's amazing. But it's like, okay, she did good enough that like we could reward her because we right. love her. It feels very that, you know? Right. No offense. I know you're listening in me. Sorry. You know what um, I did find interesting, though, is the instead of who should go home, Fred asks for two names to lip sync. And I thought that was interesting because I think that's better than saying who should go home tonight. I feel like that's quite diplomatic as well because I right. feel like it's better to say two names than one. Right. I feel like it's really harsh to single out one person, but if you have the ability to name two people... I feel like that is much more diplomatic. Right. And if the reason is who did bad in the challenge and deserves to lip sync because it was that bad, who amongst your peers, I feel like it is easier to then pick two people and say, well, they objectively did bad and I don't like their runway, rather than just saying, well, you know, I think Mistress is my biggest competition, so I want her to go home. You can't really say that someone should lip sync just because they're a good competition. Yeah. They had to have done bad. Um, And Fred Fred takes the advice and says, actually, I'm going to put three of y'all in the bottom. (laughs) And I love that so much because they all universally say Madam and Abby. And Who then I think... she sticks in Mama Queen too. I mean, <laughs> she right. hated her shoes. She so hated funny. her shoes. Going from like giving her a random win the week before because they just live for her to be like, actually, no, fuck you. <laughs> and your You're... fucking shoes. Yeah. All the shoes. Yeah. And she then... literally says, Mama, those shoes. Uh, really the shoe. and then six are in the bottom for it um and it's funny because like i feel like at this point most of the tension is around abby and madam mm-hmm. it, it feels weird people that have a name like that it's weird calling them just madam you know but madam um, madness is so much i know uh, mm um but mickey mouse she also had an int- she had like kind of an underdog storyline i think people are kind of over her and like not really I feel like it's always hard because, like, when there's a bit of a, a queen who's, like, not an outcast, but, like, an other, like, a bearded queen. Mm-hmm. And I think she's one of the first in all of Drag Race. She was the first bearded and hairy because Crystal was the first hairy queen yeah. to come walking in. But Crystal did full glam face. Yeah. Some monster faces, too, most sometimes. Yeah, but they saw the but, hairy chest right. and, and pits and everything. Which, Madame did have the hairy chest in the first episode. But, yeah, they have their beard. I think the I, first bearded uh, queen after that was Danny. I don't think anybody Danny. else had facial hair from in the franchise that I can think of. So Madam was really trailblazing, but like nobody else really got a chance to follow in that trail. Yeah, and you know, it's hard with queen, a queen like that because I feel an, almost an immediate want to defend her mm-hmm. because I'm like, what you're doing is sacred and like really important to see on Drag Race. Right. And like huge, like, like... Violet. <laughs> yeah. 
uh, even though they're just lazy and want to be hot as boys, you know, <laughs> uh, that, that tea is crazy. But like, it's like, you feel like you want to like defend them, protect them. Mm-hmm. But then also you're at odds with like, oh, well, you're not serving. Like her energy was so inconsistent all she, season. Yeah. She's like pretty low energy. And like, she had a couple of really cool looks, but like, again, she just seemed a little undercooked. Right. But at the same time, you want to root for her because like, this is a trailblazing queen mm-hmm. and like, it is really cool that she's there. But the other queens also seem over her. Yeah, absolutely. And I felt bad. Yeah. Um, so then Seder Jean is out in episode five, Snatch Game, where we borrow oh the nude photo shoot from season three. Yet another legacy challenge. Yes. Why? So re- Except fully nude. Like fully not, nude. Not like, oh, you can have a little like Tasteful privacy. Scarf. Like literally Janie Sweet, her dick around. You can see someone's <laughs> dick at some point. I think like so. uncensored. Like it's crazy. <laughs> Um, Seder Jean taking a grinder photo, like you mentioned. Yeah, that was that was absolutely wild. Um, the snatch game is like a blur because I don't know most of these women. You know, I will say, I was I left this snatch game wondering, am I not funny? Because <laughs> I thought Seder Jean's Mega Mega Mindy was so funny. I mean, like. Fat superhero, whatever, maybe that isn't super tasteful, but I understand that, like, if your character is supposed to be someone who used to be someone on TV, like, if someone were to do the Pink Power Ranger, yeah, I think that's b- the best thing that we could maybe equate that to, and they decide to do it in a fat suit. Yeah. And, like, they're eating cheeseburgers <laughs> while, like, I'm fighting villains. <laughs> I think that would be funny, because there's a visual dissonance. Yeah. It might not be in the best taste, but comedy usually isn't. So, like, I thought her performance was funny. And then, like, getting up and then kind of being tired and then eating more, throwing the food at Fred. Like, I thought it was hilarious. And I thought that the Joe Exotic was really funny. Okay, why do I feel like... Why do we see so much Joe Exotic? Uh, Yes. I need to ask that. But also, like, I feel like a lot of non-Americans do Joe Exotic. So many. Like, it worries me that I feel like this is such, like, a common perception. I mean, like, they're not (laughs) wrong, which is also worrying. But, like, I hate that that's kind of become a go-to to, to, like, a lot of non-American, like, (laughs) cultural references for our country. Right. Um, Also, it's always really femme or, like, softer characters portraying Joe Exotic, Mm -hmm. which is so funny, because it's like, let me put my butch pants on and do this, like, (laughs) this butch pants. And we do this voice, too! I mean, it was a good little, like, come-out-of-your-shell moment for Chelsea, I think. 100%. I think it was a good challenge for her. Um, Okay, and talk about random wins, because, like, I thought Envy was hilarious, so it's like, you don't need to give her these random wins weeks before. Right. Because she, this character she did was very fleshed out, and it's one of those things where, like, I don't know who you're impersonating. But it was but funny. But that's a good impersonation yeah. of it. And, like, it was very consistent and a very, like, textbook Snatch Game. Yeah. F- felt very studied. Like, Envy was like, okay, so when I do Snatch Game, I'm going to do this is what I'm going to do. Right. But it was successful. So it's like, this seemed like a more appropriate win than some of the, like, random throwouts, in my opinion. Even then, Chelsea is called as the absolute winner of Snatch Game. Oh, yeah. That, I forgot Again. about that. Again. Two weeks in a row, people are called as the winner. They're like, you're the winner, but we're going to give it to Envy. Yeah. <laughs> the the girl last week, um, the one of the Cedergine. dance challenge. No, no, no. Amber oh, yeah. Vineyard. Oh, yeah. Amber Vineyard was the dance teacher, and she says, Cedergine, you were the one I was looking at. You were the best one and the most improved. And that's it. But And Fred specifically says, Chelsea was 100% the winner. Well, but then they give it to Envy. Okay, and they also, like... They they stretch out um, what's her face a little bit more. Um, Abby? Oh wait, no, they don't. It's the same thing. This happens to both of them. Cedric Jean is told that she was the best, and then she doesn't get the win and goes home next week. Mm. Chelsea boy says that she was the winner of snatch game, doesn't win, and then she goes home next week. It's the curse of being the best. Well, because they've also they edged both of them all season from yeah. a win, and I think that Chelsea absolutely deserved at least one win, and it was very egregious that she never got one. And Cedric Jean was such a standout that you think she was going to get a win. So I feel like for both of them, they're really getting edged from like the a deserved win all season, and then they don't get it. In the one where they really deserved it. Yeah. And the runway category is the half... They call it half man, half woman, which I hate that. 
Yeah. And she would just call it split drag because in the workroom, Janie and Abby and one other person say it's the split personality look. Like whenever they got is in the, the mail, yeah. now to me is becoming very clear that they got different words than whatever was sent to RuPaul. Yeah. And so they just had to sort of roll with whatever Ru narrated. And so, like, if they were told, do a split personality look, and that's what they put together, and then Ru says half man, half woman, they're like, well, that's not what we were told. And I think Janie even claps back. Or yeah. maybe um, maybe it's Chelsea claps yeah. back and says, well, you know, we were just told it was a split look. Yeah, well, because, like, Chelsea goes with the meta, the, um, like, the almost, like, mystique, like, mm-hmm. half, like... Which I thought was I really cool. I love that look. I really appreciated Mama Queens because I think Mama Queen also is talking about more like binary than. Been talking about being non binary and how they don't see themselves as male or female. Yeah, but more that the so. The look wasn't like, supposed to be that way. Yeah, but it was also. It was more so like the two energies, mm-hmm. which like breaking it down, I think is a really cool like interpretation of it is like the masculine and the feminine. Fem- feminine? Feminine. The masculine and the feminine broken down more so as to like soft and hard like mm-hmm. like the more she had the more like demonic side she took it as almost like her more, more demonic like evil side for the masculine quote unquote mm-hmm. and then like a, a softer more angelic side which i thought was a really cool interpretation from a non-binary person when you're told do half man half woman and you're like right. well, i'm neither of these <laughs> so she more so i guess like evoked the feelings of of that, which I thought was cool. I thought it was. Um, we have to talk about the winner of the runway, though. And that's the Muppet look. Oh, my God. Wait, no, 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 no. Wait, 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 no, no. We're not talking about that. <laughs> that is so that is so ridiculous. Do you remember when she did Girls Just Want to Have Fun in that look? Do you remember when she recorded a music video? <laughs> the as fact, soon as she got eliminated. The fact that she put that look back on. <laughs> It's so, it's so bad. It's crazy how, like, the, both sides of it are bad. Like, if you put either of them together into a full look, it would be bad. And it's also one of those things that's so weird because she had a near flawless package. Yes. The besides entire the time. hay. The hay look was bad, but it was really well built. It was like a Miss Cracker look. Sure. <laughs> but everything. It was bad with taste. <laughs> Or something. But, ev- but like everything was so well built and then you mm. get to this and it's like what happened? <laughs> um, okay. Janie's though. That mirror. I liked the mirror but I liked nothing else about okay, it. Okay well the boy side was like kind of crazy but like I just thought it was so cunty when she like turned oh, like yeah. at like was it third third eight? I don't know. Um Three, 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 quarters? three quarters. I'm not yeah. able to talk. <laughs> what art imitates I life. I don't Lars. understand the t-shirt tank top thing. It's very 2001 when we were The putting... men's fashion is like never seen men's fashion before. Right, right, right. Never put clothes on a boy before. Like, <laughs> oh, I'm in drag 24-7. I've never actually worn boy clothes. So I, I don't know what to do. Um, but the mirror was really cool. It was cool. so cunty. And I mean, that hair was everything. Yeah, whipped. Because also sometimes the half and half with the hair can be like a little... A lot. Yeah, it can be... Well, because like with someone like Envy, like you have the woman and then you have the other side where it's like the lesbian undercut. <laughs> yeah. well, it's actually, it's giving more like female superhero. Yeah. Like usually like... Someone who's in like a fitted like bodysuit look doing on Envy. combat. I hate it so it's, much. It's one of her like only like kind of misses. Yeah. But she's still one. You know what Janie's looks like? Are those old um not Nintendo, Nickelodeon runways where like Ashley Tisdale would be out with like a long sleeve with a cami and a scarf. <sighs> it's very that. And uh, Uggs. Layer, that, two, that two three hats layering yeah, yeah 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 that's what that looked like <laughs> um, so let me take you back in time yeah watching season one of holland at this point i was pretty frustrated and then we get to this makeover episode and i really you were cons- checked out. i really considered stop quitting the season at this point this was like a breaking point for me almost and then the musical was really good and i was back in yeah. But this episode, like, almost took me out. Because, you know, we've been talking about it. I fucking love me some Chelsea Queen. 
Chelsea yeah, boy. Yeah, so Chelsea boy is <laughs> out at this point. And my note that I have is, how is Mama Queen still here? Um, I yeah. don't understand because Mama has done bad so many challenges in a row and it's still here. And we get into these makeovers and it's mom's dads and best friends, which I like the mix of, but I don't like the mix of male, female. Cause then it sort of goes back to some of those old seasons where it's like, this person was picked to be a problem. Yeah. Some of these people get people who are a lot easier to transfuse, transfuse, infuse their drag onto. Yeah. And then others have a much harder time. Um, can I get my opinion? Please do. The bottom two this week should have been uh, Mama Queen and Abby. Okay. I think that... <laughs> I think that Janie and Chelsea Boy were innocent. Janie was the winner to me. Janie... Okay, well, I'm biased because Janie in dark hair is, like, its own sexuality. Right. She is so ridiculously gorgeous. In so hot. Red with black hair. Oh, my God. And this wine um, red is I so and beautiful. And then I loved Chelsea's Mars Attacks look. I loved it, too. I thought it was so great. I thought her makeover looked pretty good. Um, Mysterious makeover judging. Mysterious. It doesn't because, skip over Holland. I mean, okay, my opinion is I think Mama Queen did the worst. Absolutely. I also think that they were, again, soft spot for Mama Queen. They felt bad and they didn't want to eliminate her in front of, isn't that her dad? Mm-hmm. Like, they, I know they had, like, a soft moment together and it was, like, a very, I mean, it was very sweet because their dad is very, like, was very sensitive to, like, their gender journey and everything. Right. Which was very gorgeous to see, but the look was not gorgeous to see. And that is hard. And the length on both dresses are suspicious. And then are they doing the pregnant thing again? They are. She came in pregnant. She came in pregnant and then she's pregnant here. I hate it. Yeah, I I don't love that. Uh, Like you said, I think Chelsea and her makeover actually look like they're related. Yes. Janie and her mom look like they're related. And I think the point of a makeover challenge is to put your drag on someone and make it look like you. Yeah. And have their essence in you, and they both did that. I think that Envy's looked really costumey. It looked very not like Envy's drag, which I think threw me off. She has a she's a bit of a slump at this point because mm-hmm. I did not like her look last week. I mean, she's winning challenges, so she's in no slump. But aesthetically, for me, she is. Yeah. Because I didn't like her look last week, and then this week is just so not an Envy look. I think the hair is very Envy, and then everything else is not. These floppy alpacas were really egregious to me. <laughs> if they had just not had the alpacas, maybe I wouldn't have hated it I as much. I saw the alpacas and they were floppy. <laughs> well, because she's trying to give Peruvian tea, right? Sure. I mean, her is that her mom? Because she does look really cute. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I think I wrote down... Uh, did I write everyone's down? I don't think I did. Never mind, I lied. Well, it's fine, because we don't have to I think talk about this mom. episode anymore. Okay. Except for... We do nine to five by Dolly Parton because and Jamie eats. We didn't talk about this either. They did. They did. I want to dance with somebody for the three way lip sync, which had not been done in US yet, mm-hmm. which was really interesting because that was like I, they've done it at this point. Um, Morphine did it, right? But Morphine and Tsunami, yes, iconic. But up until that point, they had so it was really weird that they got a fresh song. Mm-hmm. But then again, with nine to five, which still hasn't been done. Which is surprising Jamie that they haven't done it. Jamie did eat that, though. She ate when she did the boot scoot and she Boogie did that and did little the boot thing. scoot, like, eight step. She was, she was killing it. That look served it, served for the performance very well, because it was a very cute, like, almost hoedown, like, go into the square dancing bar. Yeah. Um, but she had no business being in the bottom. She had no business being in she the bottom. She should have won. Um, but she, she was there to do her job, which is slay. And she ate that. Um... Okay, and the next episode is like a freaking mega challenge. It's it's insane. So it's called Maxima the Rusical. This is episode seven. And I have to start this out by saying I hate a non-elimination episode right before the finale. Oh yeah. I really I hate, hate it. That. It's one of my least that is such a that is such a specific T mm-hmm. that I hate. Because like, yes, an elimination before the like finale is sad but that person gets booked first of all and yeah it, it does them so well in the eyes of the fan fandom but you just like get so annoyed like first what was it season 14 right when we went in with the five like girl and by I this mean, point mama and abby shouldn't be here okay 
Mama should have been out. feels the same way. And yeah, Mama should have been out at least two weeks ago, and Abby should have been out at least three weeks ago. There were so many times the two of them should have been in the bottom and should have gone home, but didn't. Can I? Can I give my? Oh, I'm gonna yawn. Oh no. Am I boring you? No, I was <laughs> looking at Abby's looks. <laughs> Sorry. Um, can I give my real opinion? I, I, it's going to be unconvincing because I just yawned, but this is my favorite episode of the season. I mean, it's a good because Ruskal. I love the Ruskal, and then to have a ball right after is so crazy, and I absolutely love it. It's pathologically insane. Um I talked about this musical with Jared before we started recording. I think this musical is so fun and so weird. I obviously don't know the culture and right. their level of reverence to... She's their queen, right? It's Maxima a monarchy. Maxima's their queen and she's still their queen. Because it's <laughs> hilarious to me because, I mean, the only monarchy that I personally am culturally familiar with is, of course, the UK. Mm-hmm. And, I mean the reverence to the queen there is strong. Right. It, unless you're Whether like, they want um, it to be or Unless not. you're anti-monarchy, which, like, respect, but, like, the people who, like, are for the queen are, like, up her ass. Mm-hmm. She's still alive, right? No. Oh, my <laughs> she's God. She's gone, gone. She's been gone for a little while. That's crazy. I keep forgetting <laughs> she's dead. Oh, my God. Pour one out for the queen. I thought she was listening. I, no wonder she hasn't been commenting recently. Damn, girl. <laughs> I, no, she's been gone for a little while now. Uh, wow. They didn't release Tears of the Kingdom <laughs> on its date. I'm dead. Is that for ass real? Serious. They delayed Tears of the they Kingdom. They delayed Tears of the Kingdom in the United Kingdom. There were tears in the kingdom because of that, Mama. Because of that. And they were worried that it would be too on the nose. That is I'm gonna let your brain process wild. That. Um, so Oh yeah, but <laughs> Yeah, but no, you're right. I mean it, British people, I don't think a lot of them love the monarchy, but they'll be outwardly kind. They won't say anything Respect mean. the queen. Yeah. This musical literally portrays the queen <laughs> as a money-grubby, drunk party girl who seduced her way to the crown. And I, I really gotta know, did this lead to the real downfall of Holland's oh Drag God, Race? Like, did think... she see this and go... Yes. Fuck that. Because, like... I'm suing the shit out of that. It's them. almost like... What's her name? Anna Delvey? She was, like... Is that the person that Morphine did for Snatch Game? The, like, the socialite scammer. Oh. She basically, like... She partied her way to the crown. At least from this... Because that's the thing is, I know nothing about their monarchy. Yeah, I know nothing. So I am led to believe... That this girl was like, oh, I need money. I need to be set for life. Oh, I'll, I don't really love this man, but I'll, you know, I'll pretend to cry and be emotional and be, be the sweet wife so I can have the crown and like, have the, <laughs> like that is absolutely crazy. And so like, I, again, I don't know if like, maybe that's like an exaggeration, but she's not a beloved person in the country or like she can have the piss taken out of her. It's one of those two things, because if she was unhappy with this, you know they got sued. Well, because, like, the thing is, like, Trump the Rusical, like, obviously portrayed him as a piece of shit, whereas, like, this, she's the main character. Mm -hmm. Like, you're, like, rooting for her to do the thing she's doing. Right. At least, like, in the narrative. So, like... Well, I mean, even in even in the Trump the Rusical, if we're going to talk about Orange Man, they uh, portray... It in Greece, yeah. so they're doing the two as a comparison. They're very kind to Trump I and mean, all those he people. Is Danny. They do ugly faces on all of them, but I mean, they're just doing ugly parodies. But they're very kind That's to all fair. those women in that room, even though they, you know, say that Betsy DeVos has never stepped in a school before. <laughs> they're still very kind to them. In this one, they legit are like. I'm a party girl. I like to get drunk. Yeah. I like to have fun. I, uh, I guess I need money. You, I don't like you, but I have legs. <laughs> yeah. Well, and you, well, That's crazy. Well, and even because the number about shedding a tear at her wedding, is that also about like making the public fall in love with exactly. her? Exactly. Like manipulating the public as well. Fred it talks in the pre-narration that she needed to make people like her. And that, that's how she chose to do it. That is so wild. It's disrespectful. Um, to a woman that's still alive. It's 
so crazy. And, and if she's not the type of person that can let the piss be taken out of her, you know she was pissed. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Janie slayed this musical, slayed. though. I mean, she's such a good lip syncer, and she's so, like, she's such a good face lip syncer. Mm-hmm. Like, the way her eyes light up when she's lip syncing. Um, she she's she's really fantastic. I loved her in this. Her and Envy, I think, were the clear standouts. Clearly. They um, totally belong here in this top four. Yeah, absolutely. I think it was very clear to me that Abby should have been gone a long time ago. Yeah. Could you imagine a world where Cedar Jean and Chelsea both survived <sighs> with uh, both of them? Instead Envy of and Mama and... Janie. Well, okay, because also Mama and Abby being in the bottom felt just like uh, what should have been, what should have happened last week. But then with no gratification because they both stayed. Right, and they both did horrible in the lip sync. But oh my god, that lip sync! We have. We'll just kind of quickly <laughs> talk about because not only did they do an entire musical, that was a <laughs> long musical too. Long it was like musical. six or seven minutes, and then and then they do three entire ball looks. They do beachwear, cocktail, and evening gown, which I loved that they did those specific categories. It feels very pageanty. Yeah. But they keep it in red, white, and blue. Boo. Which is whatever to because me. Because is it their? Is it also their country's colors? What are the Dutch flag colors? I think it I is. I think it. I'm assuming it is. Cause A lot of countries have red, white, and blue, though. It pisses me off. <laughs> I hate it. <laughs> because Drag Race is all up in their patriotic shit. And like, it is. I just have... Oh, yeah. I, okay, I will say, at least it's a deeper red and blue. Mm. It feels a little less tacky. Because um, them, France, I think the UK has that. Yep. Because they, they usually go with like a deeper blue. Mm-hmm. So it's a little more refined, but still like... I just have such a fight or flight response when I see... Red, white, and blue. We've spoken about this <laughs> and our lack of nationalism. Yeah. Um, similar- I think Janie ate up every look, Janie though. ate up, and Envy, I like the through line of hers, the mm-hmm. futuristic vibe. Yeah. Um, it, they weren't all my favorite looks, but I loved how consistent they are, and I love when someone presents looks for... A, I mean, obviously, because of how... Um, uh, what's the word? I feel like you get these prompts and you're like oh this is a ball or these are going to be presented together Mm -hmm. like i'm not doing a beach and cocktail look like for a standalone runway right i feel like it was very clear that this is some sort of trio some sort of going to be presented together gig so i feel like there was intentionality in that between a lot of the girls because you also see it with Janie, with like the sort of like strap strappy ribbony the ribbony yeah i um, love that evening gown so much with that beautiful hair yeah she looks like um it's kind of giving me well i guess the leg is too inappropriate but in season four when they had the um inauguration ball runway oh yeah it's kind of giving me something like that where like she's giving me because it was queen like it's almost like a first lady of some sort except with a, a slutty leg. leg. A slutty little leg. I love her cocktail look. Her cocktail look. And then the whole thing where, I mean, it was pretty simple, but her beach look where she like had her hair tied up, I think in her own t-shirt, and then she did like a hair reveal. That was pretty slay. That was it pretty was. cunty. At this point, I was so worried that Janie wasn't going to get a win because they had been giving so many to Envy that I was like, well, it doesn't matter that Janie Slade, yeah. Envy's probably going to win, or who knows, they're going to gag us and give one to Abby for some reason and make <laughs> Janie lip sync again for some reason. I was really glad that Janie got the kind of last win of the season, because she got the first and then the last. And she was she was such a successful episode that although Envy has a better track record, it really set her up like, oh no, this is a strong contender, mm-hmm. you need to watch out, like, it's not like a walk in the park for Envy. Right. Like, she has, like, serious competition here with Janie. Right. Um, then Mama and Abby lip sync to another great song, Stronger by Kelly Clarkson. Stronger, which is the third time this song's been lip synced in the franchise. And they were horrible. This is such a bad lip sync, but I am forever obsessed with... It's, like, it's so crazy. <laughs> Mama Queen doing that split... <laughs> And then, like, gasping and looking at Abby, that, like, crunchy, crunchy slow spit. And then she's like, (gasps) (laughs) like, mouth open. 
just like staring at Abby like what is happening like did she pull something You're right and it's like the crunchiest slow split it's so bad I will say shout out to Mom Queen I actually did like her looks this week I thought her yeah. bar, I mean they were she's fine. pretty she like I said <laughs> She's good Here until she's not. Yeah. Like, she has good looks until suddenly she's pregnant or, like, doing something, <laughs> like, weird pseudo-spiritual. But, like, she's got an amazing body for fashion. Mm-hmm. And when she leans into it, she slays. Yeah. Um, But that lip sync was ridiculous. And so I'm bad. so glad that they kept the confessional from Envy. U.S. could never, I feel like they would never <laughs> want to, like, skew that projection. Well, because it's not RuPaul's decision. True. I feel like they would not keep it if it was RuPaul's decision, but it's one of the funniest things in the whole season is the double save, and then it comes to Emmy going, girl, really? Because <laughs> it's, like, so real, and it's so funny to have a confessional so directly against the host and their judging, and a double save at that. Because, I mean, you see them be pissed about a double save because like oh another girl's here for another week but this is funny because they're just like these bitches should go home like they both of them should be out yeah so it's so funny and like there because there's also a sense of like i don't feel like envy or Janie are particularly threatened Mm -hmm. by either of them i feel like they both know that their competition is each other yeah and they kind of have the whole season i feel i feel like they've been the two like real like horses in the race and then like chelsea and saturday were kind of along there for a minute and then like petered out but i feel like they always knew like this is the bitch i need to watch for we're in game and so like i feel like they're just watching these other ones get dragged around randomly (laughs) and they're like what is happening what is going on here right and then we get into this finale, and Envy finally becomes a target of Abby's victimhood. <laughs> because she's like, well, you said I was the weakest last week, and then I should go home. And we're supposed to be friends. Period. And Envy's like, yeah, and I said that. Are Why they, are you mad at me? I could. It's so crazy, because it's like, y'all live together? Y'all are, like, so different. Yeah. Because I... Envy is so... I do will appreciate about her. She's so cool, calm, and collected. Mm-hmm. I don't know if she knew she had it in the bag or <laughs> what. But, like, she really is just, like, unbothered. And, like, she's one of those people that, like, the only thing she's worried about is doing her best. Right. And, like, I really appreciate that about her. Um, but it's just so unlike Abby and their personality. So right. it's just, it's so funny that they live together and they have the rapport they do because you don't really see it all season. <laughs> and it's one of the, uh, oh, but you get that kind of storyline on Drag Race sometimes where it's like, oh yeah, like I know, like we're best friends. And then when they're on the show, nothing but beef. And like, I feel like you should Caramel be there Caramel and, me. um, Tamara. Tamara, yeah. And it's like, I feel like you should be there for me and you're like, being shady to me or like not being my friend what the fuck like you get a lot of that it's very that it's very Carmel and Tamara wow the, this was the prototype wow clocked but yeah we get to the final challenge it's a terrible RuPaul garage band medley remix and then the girls come back Setter Jean is wearing her Carmen and Piggy <laughs> redo game. and I lived I lived girl Janie is wearing this wine red dress and I am yes. obsessed with what she's wearing the, with the wings I love this look on Janie she she was she was uh, and also that hair color so it's like beautiful. what is it auburn almost it's so pretty um, absolutely stunning none of the girls who came back had really anything of note except I mean you talked about Sutter jeans but I think I, we should talk about Patty Pam Pam why? Because <laughs> she's Patty Pam Pam. Tam- Tammy Tam Tam. Tammy Tam Tam. Um, <laughs> okay, so Mama Queen and Abby are out. They do not get to lip sync. In my opinion, they should not have been in the top four at all. Abby, I've talked about so much, and I've talked about her trajectory. What I will say is that she's had a lot of good TV moments, which I, I honestly wonder if they kept her... Because of that? And honestly, I just feel like they should have cut Mama Queen. Mm. Because I feel like she would, she kind of hinders the performance aspect of the mm-hmm. final number. Because I think if you're looking at it from, no offense, Mama. But if you're <laughs> looking at it from like a performance TV entertainment aspect, 
I feel like you're going to get a stronger final number if it's Envy, Janie, Abby. Right. I feel like Mama, one, she throws the proportions off because she's way taller than everyone else. Right. She's not at the same level in terms of dancing and choreography as everyone else. So I feel like, why have a double save if she's obviously, one, not going to win, and B, she's only going to hinder the final performance. Exactly. Um, so yeah, that I feel like she should have been excused a little earlier. Absolutely. But I mean, it really was only ever between Janie and Envy. Yeah, the finale lip sync happens. It was You Were Born This Way by Gaga. Pretty Second cool lip sync song for the finale, I would yeah, say. Yeah, I love this as a fi- finale song. We cuz we've gone we've also gone Edge of Glory as a finale song. Mm-hmm. But I mean, it's a if you're going to do an English song, I mean, that's a queer anthem, so I feel like it makes sense. And we haven't had Born This Way since season 4. Yeah. And the last time it happened, Milan Swiffer the floor with her pussy. Period. And I feel like a lot of Gaga songs can make for a finale song. Oh, absolutely. Like, I could see, like, You and I as, like, a really cool mid-tempo, like, finale ballad. Anyways. <laughs> I I really like that they both went a little more simple for the finale looks. Envy and Janie. Right. Like, neither of them... Because it's funny, because the two that got excused, Mama and... Uh, Abby, they both did gowns. Like, they both did the expected, like, huge, grand finale thing. And they didn't really seem on brand. And V's gave me what Raja did for three. I was going to reference three. It was just very, like, that clean kind of retro, yeah. like, vampy. So Where stunning. Where Janie sort of did Manila, like... Ah! Uh, because didn't Manila wear feathers? She would... Or, no, that... What, Alexis what? had marabou. No, she was feathers, because she was wearing that, like... It's a green dress... I remember it was, like, a lime or, like, avocado green dress. Yeah. But, yeah, it was just cool because they both did kind of a different vibe. But I think it speaks to their self-assuredness in their drag and in what they do. Um, And I know Janie said, like, this was something that she really wanted to do with the wings and everything. Mm -hmm. Like, this was a vision that she had. Um, So, yeah, very much the correct top two. Very much the looks. No feathers, but, I mean, it was very on brand for her. Yeah, it was very reminiscent of Three. Yeah. Um, I loved it. I, I loved did, too. It. I thought as rough as everything was, it was absolutely their correct top two, and it felt like it could have gone to either of them. hmm Yeah, I think I remember Envy really sweeping, and I'm not mad that she won it all, because yeah. I've always been a fan of Envy, even before she was on the show. I think for me, I was more just like, well, it didn't really feel like there was any other choice (sighs) because like, I don't know if anybody else was given the same space that Envy was. Yeah. And I feel the same way kind of about season six is that I feel like, yeah, Bianca was probably always going to win, but Bianca and others were given more space than others like totally adore and courtney were completely given passes in ways that they didn't give passes to trinity or laganja or jocelyn where if everybody was judged the same way and very consistently i think the finale would have looked different and even if bianca still won it would have felt more just and fair i think going into the finale knowing that mama queen and abby were there it was like Well, who else is going to (laughs) win? Right. You gave one pity win to Janie J.K. Yeah. And one completely deserved win to her. (laughs) So. It's almost in hindsight, it feels like that first win they gave to Jane because they're like, listen, it's about to get crazy. (laughs) And we need to give Envy at least three wins no matter what. (laughs) So we're just going to give this to you now because we like you. Right. And if you do good later, we'll give it to you again. Right. (laughs) Um, but she is going to win a lot. Yeah. It's, yeah. It was very Jimby, Jimby? Jimby. Jimbo and Candy. <laughs> yeah. They're, okay. S- very similar uh, energy-wise because it was like, well, different for me because I don't like Jimbo. But <laughs> like s- similar is that Jimbo was probably going to win no matter what. But the fact that it was just Jimby and Candy at the end, if it was like Jimbo, Candy, Alexis... Or not Alexis. Uh, Alexis. Wow. Michelle. Ma- <laughs> not Alexis. Michelle. Jessica. Je- <laughs> My brain 
blanked, oh. and I saw New York uh, theater. <laughs> And, like, I don't know, let's for shits and gigs say Mrs. Kasha Davis wasn't shafted oh, in some way. Let's. And, like, La La Ree, you know? Let's. Like, if that was the the end somehow, I think it would have felt maybe a little bit easier to swallow because it was like, well, you brought it down to two people and the other two that just went home, like, you clearly had no intention of crowning them. Yeah. Like... I love Jessica, but they had no intention of crowning her. And who went right before that? It was Alexis Michelle, right? Yeah. They had no intention of ever crowning her either. So it was like, well, who else is going to win? Yeah. Or Heidi. If Heidi had been up there, it would have been easier if Jimbo had won. So it was like, well, it was kind of a fair fight. Yeah. You know? So in this situation, it was like, is it a fair fight? The person you gave the most wins to versus someone who you tolerate? Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. But I love Envy though. Envy, I mean, she was kind of an icon before even Holland happened. Like she was Absolutely. a known name. So good for her. That was a slay. Yeah. Really interesting season. Um, there's probably a good reason why it didn't continue. Didn't continue. <laughs> I mean, we were able to talk about all of it in one episode, yeah. which is very unlike us. So right. I feel like that speaks to it a little bit too. It's one of those ones where it's like, if you're like on a plane or you're on vacation, <laughs> Like, you could watch that. Like, if right. you have, like, if you're, like, in a cabin and, like, you need some random stuff to download, like, mm-hmm. before you go on vacation, download a season of Holland or something. Right. It'll take, go, go for the ride. It's short. It, it Quick. Fl- and it's fascinating. There's, like, 43 minute episodes. They're tiny. And it is so interesting listening to the Dutch language, isn't it? How they flip from that language to English. Yes, and that's the other, like, incredibly fascinating thing about these international seasons is, like, the usage of English. Mm -hmm. Not in this one, really, but in some seasons, people speak full English. Mm -hmm. It's funny because people, like, envy. She uses English when she knows it's, like, a moment. Right. When they're like, this might be a GIF or, like, this might be used in a trailer. I'm going to speak in English for this. But, like, if I'm talking about personal shit, like, I'm going to be, like, in, like, my native language. Well, I don't think... Envy's like freaking trilingual. She speaks, I think, more. five. Wow. She speaks a lot. One of them speaks five. But they'll be like, da 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 da, you better work, da 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 da, bitch. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Gay slang in English <laughs> right. is my favorite. Or da 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 da, she's a cunt. Da, yeah. Da, 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 da. Just like for emphasis. Right. I love it. Um, it's like a pepper in yes. their, their language. Nepa, nepa, nepa. <laughs> I think about that so much. <laughs> okay, so you said you had a spicy take. For and it was gonna burn down the building. Oh my god! As your controversial <laughs> opinion for this season, I feel like oh my god, I feel like Drag Race Holland only happened so that they could give Envy Peru a crown. <gasps> Gag. Because like Envy Peru is such an icon. Like I said, she mm-hmm. feels almost like an ambassador of drag. Sure. Internationally, because yeah. like huge name, always been a huge name. Like super fierce, does a lot. Mm-hmm. I feel like, because you were talking about how Holland felt like kind of a random, and you didn't get a lot of Holland culture or anything. Holland feels like such a random choice, especially early on, mm-hmm. before we had a lot of countries chosen, before we had places like Spain and France even carved out, like we're going to Holland. Right. But it really feels like they're like, well, this is where Envy Peru is. <laughs> and then we have like, at least 10 other queens that are fierce. Like, right. at least a season or two's worth. But to me, para me, spooky me, <laughs> Dutch me. Not Dutch me. I feel like maybe they just were like, well, let's do it here so that Envy can compete. Like, we'll, we'll see if Envy would be interested and we can have her on a season. I can see that. I'm not discounting your theory. Because I do believe that some seasons are constructed with certain people to win. And I wouldn't be surprised if they were like, we really want to crown this bitch somehow. Yeah. Not saying they literally just, like, had a, a boner for Amy Peru and they constructed the entire season. But it really feels like she was the incentive for them to go to Holland. Because yeah. it just feels so random, not discounting how amazing the drag is in the Netherlands. But when they're just starting to expand the drag race, like, 
world franchise, the international franchise, I feel like going like to France or something first would make so much more sense right. than Holland. after we've done UK. Yeah. So it just felt so random. So in my opinion, I feel like envy is really what led them there. The thing that is interesting to me about Holland as my final kind of stamp, it's not necessarily a controversial opinion, but more just kind of wrap up thought on it is I cannot tell how much RuPaul was personally involved in the branding part outside of it. Because mm. Ru says now she'll give the license to whoever wants to pay for it. Seems like Ru is very hands off now. That if Salt Lake City, Idaho wanted to do a Mormon drag race, Ru would give the rights to them right now. So they could do that, you know? Or any country in the world wanted to do it, she would give it to them. World of Wonder would if they paid the licensing fees yeah. and handled all of the legal things. Yeah. At this point, we only have a couple international seasons. It seemed like Ru was very hands off with Thailand. Yeah. And maybe that was just like a, that slipped through the cracks and Ru didn't know that it was happening. And so then when it came to UK, that was Michelle really wanting to get that. Yeah. That was Michelle's baby. With Canada, if we're to kind of believe the priming rumors, maybe Brooke was asked to do it. Maybe before anybody had the idea to bring it anywhere else. And then the intro for Holland is Rue having a video conference with Fred asking if she would host Drag Race Holland. Mm. So it almost paints this picture that Rue hand selected Fred and was like, Hi, you're my Holland ambassador. Yeah. Do the thing. And I'm still going to be involved everywhere, which is why Rue's on the runway, narrating the prompt, and why Rue even announces the winner at the end. Yeah. So it it feels like Rue is, like, very reluctantly letting go of the wheel, but holding on just enough mm. with Holland. And so going to your thing that you said, if Rue was sort of looking at big Holland people, yeah. and Rue was like, who's that one? That girl's fierce. Oh, yeah. She's got to win. Like, that could have been some another takeoff, considering that it feels like Rue is, like, a little more hands-on here than she was anywhere else, mm. you know? Very interesting. Yeah. That's my thought. That's my tea. <laughs> <laughs> Any other final thoughts about Drag Race Hall in Season 1? Um... Worship the dolls. <laughs> Do you I love, believe in the I love Janie JK. Oh, I love her. I hope she's having a good day. Um, Chelsea Boy and Sutter Jean need to need to make their way to some versus the worlds. Or I was just gonna ask you who All-Stars. would you cast for a versus the world? Yeah, well, because we've already gotten Janie, but cast her again. <laughs> and Kita. Um, oh yeah, from two. Mm-hmm. I love me some Kita Minaj. I'm excited for you to watch her season and see her trajectory Mm -hmm. um from from this group i would say definitely chelsea and setter jean Mm -hmm. i think everyone else like i mean like madam madness in a couple years might be interesting abby would be great tv she would be such good tv um but i think really in terms of who's drag do i want to see compete again chelsea and setter jean absolutely one i think i would love to see setter jean Specifically in front of RuPaul only because I feel like Setter Jean would have the same effect on Ru that Jimbo does. Mm. I feel like Ru would see Setter Jean and would start cackling immediately. Yeah. Like Ru would just she get would just that, do that drag. Like, smile at her and exactly. then like. Exactly. Ru would get, get it. Yeah. You know? Setter Jean's drag is so tailored to camp and being silly hee hee ha even that runway where she wheels out that baby and it pees on her yeah and fred was like oh ha ha rue would have lost her shit over yeah. that yeah they would have loved that and rue would have been like you won the season because <laughs> of that gown just because that baby fuck. peeing on you you're safe as fuck right it's because that baby pee in your face <laughs> so so who's next oh 13. Oh. But we decided that next week we want to delay oh, one more week. Yeah. Speaking of 13, did you see Denali's picture they posted? 
Wait, wait, which one? The, you, you would know. Oh, no. <gasps> oh, yes, what? I did see that. <laughs> In that little slutty, thotty photo. <laughs> that little sleuth. That I loved that. So next week is a super special secret special yes, episode. Yes, super special secret special special. Oh, I love that. And then 13 afterwards. And then 13 after. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we really need to delay 13 because I'm not done with it. Jess, it's been six weeks and I still haven't finished the season. What are, where are you at? I am still in the midway point of the disco thing. Oh. That disco mentory, I got so bored and I still... Turned it off two weeks ago and I haven't turned it back on. Gucci, Susan, Lucci. <laughs> I hate 13 so much. Like, I want to skip it. But I know that there are great queens to talk about. Watch it at two times speed. <laughs> I should do that, honestly. But honestly, like, you might just have to start skipping to, like, challenge. challenge. I think I'm going to just start watching Runways. And then when we get to it, there's going to be a point where my notes are full. And, and I'm going to be like, just... <laughs> and then this happened and blah, 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 and this drama. So then the runway category for the next episode. <laughs> right. It's just, it's just going to get just thinner and thinner. Stops. And then, yeah, it's just going to trail out like you died. So then Simone won again. And then this person went home. And then this person wins. And then Rosé. <laughs> yeah. Ugh. Anyways, thank you all for listening. Thank you for tuning in. Um, thanks for doing Holland with me. Yeah, what a This who? was fun. Um, we will chat with you very soon. Next week is a fun, super special, secret, super special. Ew. I'm excited for next week. I've been looking forward to it. Remember, you are doing a fantastic job. You are doing the best you can, and that is all you can do. Uh, chat with you next week. Goodbye. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> Please. <laughs>